A few months ago, I agreed to get dinner with my girlfriend. We met up around 6pm and walked downtown. She had just finished the take-home exam, so she was feeling pretty relieved and was excited to enjoy a few drinks with dinner. As we walked, we kept our eyes open for any restaurant that sounded interesting. We have our usual haunts, but like to change it up and try new things whenever possible. We decided against pizza, Thai or Indian. That's when we noticed it. Hidden amidst the flashing neon lights and the busy storefront windows was a hanging wooden sign. Painted on the wooden sign were three red mushrooms. We live in a pretty hip college town, so I wasn't surprised that this looked like something straight out of Diagon Alley from Harry Potter. It seemed like it could be a neat gimmick, so we decided to check it out. As we opened the door and stepped inside, I was shocked to see that the entire restaurant appeared to be lit by candlelight. Kind of a neat atmosphere. There weren't many people eating here, but I figured it was probably because the place was so new. I did notice one woman seated at a small table by herself in the corner. Her eyes were open so wide, it was like she was forcing herself to keep her eyes open as far as she possibly could. It was pretty unsettling. From the moment we walked in to the moment we left, she kept trying to sneak glances at us. It seemed like she was trying really hard not to break into a fit of laughter. She seemed to think something about my girlfriend and I was very funny. She made me feel very uneasy, and the entire time we were there, I tried to ignore this woman. Anyway, after we entered, a tiny, beady-eyed college-aged girl took us to our seat and brought us tea and menus. The menu was really cool. It was actually carved on wood. I guess they could get these mass-produced, but it seemed really expensive. The menus would have been pretty tough to read, but there was beet red paint in the notches, so the items were all legible. Between the atmosphere and the menus, I was pretty impressed with the place at this point. As we perused the options, a very short, Middle Eastern looking man walked aggressively towards us from the kitchen and slammed a small stone bowl on our table. He never took his hand off the bowl. My girlfriend and I were pretty confused and frankly weirded out by this guy's behavior. I managed to squeak out something along the lines of, I'm sorry, is everything all right? The man told us that at this restaurant, we have to pay before we eat. Apparently, every item is equal in value and each customer is entitled to a single item. This was strange, but whatever. I reached into my wallet and pulled out my MasterCard, tossed it in the bowl, and the man promptly turned the bowl upside down, slammed it loudly on the table, then flipped it right side up, empty. No, he said, not accept. His voice was gruff but high-pitched. We told him that we didn't have any cash, and he spit in the bowl. I was getting disgusted and frankly annoyed with our treatment. Things were getting weird and I wanted to leave. He turned to my girlfriend and zeroed in on a ring she had on her finger. It looked like gold and tiny diamonds throughout. I'd seen her wear it before, but it hadn't come from me. This, this woman growled, pointing at my girlfriend's ring. Pay this. I was ready to protest and storm out, but my girlfriend quickly shut me up and gladly tossed the ring in the bowl. The man darted away without a second glance. I started to tell her that she shouldn't have given them such a nice piece of jewelry when she again interrupted me. It was cubic zirconia, she chuckled devilishly. It cost like $20. Fair enough, I thought. This place was weird as hell. But I was hungry, I was really making an effort to enjoy the novelty of it. I started looking through the menu. I'll admit, knowing that the bill is already paid really liberates you as you make your decision. So, when I saw something that sounded outlandish and goofy, I didn't think twice before settling on the order. 
I loved trying new foods, and this seemed like something fun to try. When the beady-eyed waitress returned to the table, I gave her my order. I'll have the Equinox steak, please. The waitress raised an eyebrow at me and said, That item only comes in rare. That okay, hun? I like my steak rare anyway, so I agreed. Just as I ordered, the woman I was working to ignore burst out as if she'd heard the funniest joke in history. I kept my eyes and ears focused on my table. My girlfriend ordered some fancy sounding pasta dish and a glass of white wine. Time passed. We talked about my girlfriend's exam and how strange this place was, and I tried to ignore the corner woman who couldn't snap out of her hysterics. Nobody else entered the restaurant. Two other couples who had been here when we arrived got up and left. As they walked toward the exit, they looked at us with an expression that I can only describe as one of genuine concern. When the food arrived, we were truly starving. I was a bit disappointed when I saw my meal. A single ball of blood red meat. It was quite small, perhaps the size of a golf ball. I almost complained, but by that point, the restaurant had thoroughly weirded me out. I wanted to eat and get the hell out of there. I tried to cut my spherical steak with my knife, but it felt as hard as stone. I simply couldn't slice through it. Yet, when I poked at it with my fork, it was juicy and tender. Damn, this place was too much for me. I stuck my fork in and shoved the steak in my mouth. Good lord, I'm not lying when I tell you that. I have never tasted anything so delicious in my life. I savoured every moment that steak was in my mouth. I savoured every bite, every little flavour that danced in my tongue. Honestly, I've had some good steak, but nothing to compare to this. Also strange, despite the fact that my steak was a single bite, it filled me up completely. I had no more hunger also strange. I haven't been hungry since I swallowed that bite. Months ago. I'm telling you this in December. I haven't experienced hunger since mid-October. But that's not to say I've stopped eating. Anything but. After my girlfriend and I left the restaurant on that night, we hung out at my place for a few hours, and then she walked home to her own apartment. About an hour after she left, I started getting this urge. Not hunger, but an urge. I really can't describe it any better. Hunger is something that happens to your mind and your body at the same time. You feel hunger in your stomach. But this was an urge that I only felt in my head. A compulsion, really. I knew that I needed to eat. I opened up the cabinet and looked for something to munch on. First, I made myself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Can't be the classics I've always believed. I still felt the urge. So, I made another. Then another. The next thing I knew, I was out of bread. So I ate some crackers. Then I was out of crackers. So I looked to my canned goods. I ate the peas, the corn and the spam. Then I ate the beans, black, lima, green, pinto, and a garbanzo. Then the chili. I was out of canned foods. Still, I felt the urge. So, I opened the fridge. I ate the pickles, the chicken, the beef, the pork, the butter, the milk, the eggs, the yogurt, and the broccoli. I drank the chilled wine, the beer, the orange juice, the grape juice, the tomato juice, the eggnog, and the water. I still felt the urge. I cooked a cup of rice and ate it. I did the same with another cup, then a pound. The urge wouldn't go away. I looked at the clock, and it was four in the morning. Jesus, I'd been eating since like 8pm. What the hell was going on? I realised I needed to sleep. Sleep. I walked to my bedroom, turned the lights off, and laid in bed. I tried to nod off. 
I tried so hard. The urge was there. I tried to suppress it. I couldn't. And couldn't sleep. Sleeping pills. That's what it would take. I ran to the bathroom and opened a small white bottle. I swallowed three tiny blue sleeping pills. Usually, I only take two. But this seemed like a special occasion. I laid down. These usually took about 20 minutes to kick in. Damn, it's been 15. Damn, it's been 30. Damn, it's been 45. I feel nothing. I still felt the urge. I swallowed the entire bottle of sleeping pills. I swallowed the Advil. I swallowed the Tylenol. I swallowed the Claritin. I swallowed the gummy vitamins. I laid down. I tried to sleep. I could not sleep. It was six in the morning. I still felt the urge. This was too messed up. I put on my coat and walked outside. I went to the campus medical center and signed up for a walk-in doctor's appointment. But the doctor didn't listen. She said I looked fine. I look healthy. I'm still growing. It's normal to have a big appetite at my age. Have I been working out recently? No, 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 no. She wouldn't listen. I told her about the pills. She couldn't detect a trace. I think she thought I was out of my damn mind. I went home. Damn, I still felt the urge. I ate, 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 and ate. There was no food left. It was night time. My girlfriend came over. She acted like there was nothing wrong. She asked me to go out to dinner. Did you see the empty cans? Did she see the raided fridge? Did she see the scattered, empty pill bottles all over the bathroom floor? Why was she acting like everything was okay? I lost my temper. I screamed. I yelled at her. This I regret. She got mad. We were probably headed this way anyhow. But later that night, she texted me that I need to grow up and deal with my own problems before even thinking about being in a mature adult relationship. She left me. This was not good. The end of the second day. Still, I felt the urge. I needed to eat, but I was out of food. I didn't want to go outside. This left me in a difficult spot. I came to realize that if I wasn't properly hungry anyway, then it didn't really matter what I ate. I wasn't eating to satiate myself. I was eating to quiet my mind so I could really eat anything when it came down to it. I went to the bathroom. Toilet paper. Bulky, pulpy, airy, dry. I ate an entire roll, slowly, deliberately, unraveling it square by square into my desperate mouth. Immediately, I ripped open the door onto the bathroom sink. Thank God. More toilet paper. I ate it all. Square by square by square by square by square. Then I ate all the rolls. Nine rolls in total. Cardboard was hard to eat. I got each roll wet with water from the tap, then crushed it in my hand. I smushed each roll into a ball, and then sent it down my gullet. I carried on in this way with other items around the house. I spent five days eating the love seat in my living room, and eight days eating the full-size sofa. I spent two days eating my ottoman. This probably goes without saying, but I still felt the urge. I got a serrated knife and sliced up the area rug. This was difficult to eat. Eventually, I found the easiest way was to cut a small piece roughly the size of a slice of bread, then toast it in the toaster oven. It was easy to eat when it was crunchy. By the beginning of December, I had eaten anything made of fabric, stuffing, paper, or fibre in my apartment. I would sleep every once in a while, for about three hours at a time, maybe every couple days. I was naked. I had eaten all my clothes. I slept on the hardwood floor. I had eaten my sheets, pillows, mattress, and box spring. I couldn't stop and the urge wouldn't go away. It was at this time that I entered my bathroom. I had long since eaten anything I could in the bathroom. I hadn't entered the room in weeks. 
in the bathroom, I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. Have you ever seen a photo of a Holocaust victim? I used to think they were thin. When I looked in that mirror, I was utterly emaciated. There is no better word. My ribcage jutted far above my stomach. My face looked hollow and bony. My arms looked so thin that I was surprised I hadn't snapped an arm in two. In short, I looked like a skeleton with skin wrapped around it. I was horrified. I broke down. I began sobbing. The urge was still there. Why wasn't it gone? I resolved then to fight it. I would fast. I would deny the urge. I knelt down and began to pray. I grew up Baptist, but hadn't been a practicing Christian since my early teenage years. I screamed out to God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Elohim, El Shaddai, anybody who would listen. I spent days on my knees, bent over, sobbing, crying, praying, begging. By the end of the fifth day of my fast, I broke. I gave up. My urge manifested itself as a voice in my head. It kept nudging me, poking me and prodding me, encouraging me to eat, 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 eat. Damn, okay, I'll eat. I'll eat, but, but what? There's nothing left in here. I realized that I needed to go outside and hunt. Hunt what? Why couldn't I just go grocery shopping? I needed to hunt. My urges had evolved and I couldn't eat what normal people thought of as food anymore. It had been so long since I'd eaten meat. I wanted meat. Craved meat. But my urges were too twisted for a rotisserie chicken or a slab of bacon. I wanted meat raw. No, better. I wanted meat live. Better still. I wanted my meat diseased. Damn, it would be so good. I wanted my meat rabies infested. I wanted roadkill. Carry on. I wanted the big rotten corpses clean with maggots and the flies and the vultures. I wanted to stalk around the woods at night and eat stones and dirt and sticks and insects and leaves and bark and meat. I wanted to catch living squirrels and sparrows and to bite them open and drink their blood and peel off their skins and eat the meat raw and toast their skins and wings. The urge was growing. The urge was becoming larger than myself. I was giving in. I was giving the urge total and complete control. That is how I've been living for the last few nights. Finally, I can rest. Finally, I can sleep. All day long. I curl up on my hardwood floor and sleep. I sleep so soundly, like an infant. All night long, I hunt in the woods near my home. Sometimes I run through the streets of my neighborhood, looking for stray dogs and cats. But usually, it's the woods. Once I found a deer sleeping in a small clearing. Luckily, when you weigh as little as I do, you can sneak around without making a noise. I bit the deer's head and stabbed the front of its ribcage with a jagged rock. That was a delicious night. But the urge remains. I guess that's where I'm at. I just know it all goes back to that damn steak in that damn restaurant. I don't know how, and I don't know why. I haven't been hungry since that night, but every waking minute, I think only about what to eat next. This is my life now. The worst part is that I don't really mind anymore. I've almost wholly surrendered myself to the urges, but I'm still here. I'm still here. I don't look human anymore. I don't feel human anymore. I haven't spoken to a person since I saw my girlfriend back in October. I sat down at my computer to jot this all out because I know that I'm still human despite the way that I feel. Somebody please help me. Right now. I want to be a person again. <laughs>